Hello and welcome to Character Conversions, where I try to bring fictional characters to life in D&D. Today I'm back from my homebrew detour, and we are going to be building the demon butler of Phantom Hive, Sebastian Michaelis. For stats, we'll be using the standard array. Strength will be 8. While Sebastian is basically great at everything, this is D&D, and we have to make cuts somewhere. Dexterity will be 15. Sebastian is lean and swift. Constitution is 14. Gotta be able to take the occasional chainsaw to the shoulder, after all. Intelligence is 12. We are very knowledgeable. Wisdom will be 13. This will be our second most important stat. You'll soon see why. Charisma is 10. Should definitely be higher for this butler, but like I said, we have to make cuts somewhere. Moving on to race, while Sebastian looks human, he is a demon, making the perfect choice for him a tiefling. Now in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, tieflings are given alternative variants to their appearance. I recommend taking the cat-like eyes, which is convenient because Sebastian loves cats. You technically have to take a minimum of two, maybe you can convince your GM to let you get away with one, or let the contract tattoo on the back of your hand be your second. Otherwise, maybe go with fangs as it's easily concealable. Tiefling will baseline increase our charisma by two, grant us dark vision out to 60 feet, hellish resistance grants us resistance to fire damage, and we will also be able to speak, read, and write common and infernal. I'm going with the bloodline of Fierna found in Mordenkainen's Tomb of Foes rather than the bloodline of Ismodius. I feel this better represents Sebastian's suave characteristics and ability to get normal people to do what he wants. The bloodline of Fierna increases our wisdom by one, and we gain the legacy of Phlegathus. This word. We gain the Friend's Cantrip. At third level, we can cast Charm Person as a second level spell once per long rest, and at fifth level, we can also cast Suggestion once per long rest. Now for our background, we will choose Noble. This gives us History and Persuasion, proficiency with one type of gaming set. If using Tasha's proficiency swaps, I trade this for something that helps with your master's affairs, most likely Cook's utensils. We also gain one language of our choice. If your master is not human, I recommend selecting whatever their people's language is. For equipment, we gain a set of fine clothes, a signet ring, a scroll of pedigree, reflavored as some form of documentation of whose house you work for, and a purse containing 25 gold pieces. This next part is why this is the background I chose for a butler character over any other. Rather than take the position of privilege, trade it for the variant noble knight feature, retainers. You now have three commoners who act as your retainers. As a butler, these can now be your household staff. If you don't want to have another PC be the noble you serve, you could also have one of these three be your CL Phantom Hive. For class, we will be starting with a level in Monk. This gives us a d8 hit die, no armor proficiencies, proficiency with simple weapons and short swords, as well as one type of artisan's tools or a musical instrument, proficiency with strength and dexterity saves, and for skills we will choose acrobatics and stealth. Our first level class features include unarmored defense and martial arts. Unarmored defense will give us a natural AC of 10 plus our dexterity modifier plus our wisdom modifier, allowing us to battle in our finest tuxedo. After all, as a butler, we must represent our house at all times. Martial arts allows us to use dexterity instead of strength for unarmed strikes and monk weapons. The damage for both will be replaced with our martial arts die, starting with the D4. Our monk weapon of choice will be darts, reflavored as silverware we keep in our coat. And let me tell you, as a PC who has done this, the reactions of your party when you pull out a fork and throw it at your enemy is priceless. For second level, we're going to take a small detour and pick up a level of Bard. We will gain a number of d6s of Bardic Inspiration equal to our Charisma modifier, which for us is only one, but it's not really what we're doing this for. We gain two cantrips, of which I suggest Prestidigitation and Mending. Prestidigitation is useful for anything a butler might need to do, from cleaning, heating or chilling drinks, or lighting pipes or cigars. Mending will be useful for fixing in minor tears in our master's clothing or any broken tools or even weapons. And if we can't do these things, what kind of butler would we be? Next we gain four first level spells known. I'll be using these to further fill out our utility as a butler rather than expanding on our combat ability. Animal Friendship, Identify, Long Strider, and Unseen Servant are my particular choices, but these could be swapped out to fit your campaign or your individual needs better. At third level, we continue into Bard and gain the main reason we are taking these levels, Jack of All Trades. Sebastian is not just a regular butler, he is one hell of a butler. So much so that he excels at everything he does, and this is our best way to represent that. Jack of All Trades allows us to add half our proficiency bonus to any check that we are not proficient with. Next we gain Song of Rest, allowing us to heal allies for an extra d6 during a short rest. I would recommend reflavoring this as perhaps serving tea or snacks or something rather than singing or maybe playing a soothing song on the violin. Finally, we gain another first level spell, and I have chosen Featherfall to ensure we can safely fall any distance to aid our master if need be. 
At fourth level, our detour is over and we're heading back to Monk. We gain key, unlocking our access to Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, and Step of the Wind. And we gain Unarmored Movement, increasing our movement speed by 10 feet when not wearing armor or wielding a shield. At fifth level, we choose our Monastic Tradition, and we're going to go with Way of the Shadow. As a good butler, we want to make sure we are only seen when we are wanted after all. We first gain Shadow Arts, granting us the Minor Illusion Cantrip and allowing us to use our key points to duplicate the spells Darkness, Dark Vision, Pass Without a Trace, or Silence without material components. We also gain Deflect Missiles, allowing us to use our reaction to reduce the damage of a ranged attack by 1d10 plus our Dexterity modifier plus our class level. Whether or not you want to then say you spit the bullets out afterwards is between you and your GM. Moving on to 6th level, we get our first ability score improvement, and we shall trade it for a feat. I'd like to even out our odd dexterity, so we will take a feat that still lets us improve an ability score. I'll take Skill Expert from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. This increases one ability score of our choice by one. I will choose Dexterity, increasing it to 16. We also gain Proficiency in one skill of our choice. I'm choosing Perception. And we gain Expertise in one skill of our choice. I'm choosing Stealth to better benefit our Shadow Monk abilities. Finally, we gain Slow Fall. This allows us to reduce our falling distance by our Monk level times 5 as a reaction. At 7th level, we gain Extra Attack, allowing us to make two attacks instead of one when we take the attack action, followed by Stunning Strike. Now when we hit a creature with a melee attack, we can spend one key point to attempt a Stunning Strike. The target must succeed on a constitution save or be stunned until the end of our next turn. Sounds like a great way to capture someone alive for our master to question, or just to create an opening for the rest of the party to waylay into. 8th level grants us key empowered strikes, and my favorite ability, Shadow Step. Our unarmed strikes now count as magical for resistance and immunities, and as a bonus action, we are able to, when in dim light or darkness, teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space we can see. That is also in dim light or darkness. This grants us advantage on the first melee attack we make before the end of the turn. Be sure to discuss with your GM beforehand what they rule as dim light, as it can be a little finicky at some tables. At 9th level, we gain Evasion, which allows us to take no damage instead of half damage on successful dexterity saves. And we gain Stillness of Mind, which allows us to use our action to end an effect that is causing us to be charmed or frightened. After all, if we couldn't dodge a fireball explosion and refuse to be controlled, what kind of butler would we be? 10th level sees us another ability score improvement. We shall put both into our dexterity, increasing it to an 18. At 11th level, we gain Unarmored Movement Improvement, allowing us to move along vertical surfaces and across liquids on our turn without falling during the move. If we couldn't defy the laws of physics for our master, what kind of butler would we be? At 12th level, we gain Purity of Body, making us immune to disease and poison, like any powerful demon should be. 13th level grants us Cloak of Shadows. Now when in an area of dim light or darkness, we can use our action to become invisible, remaining invisible until we make an attack, cast a spell, or are in an area of bright light. Conditions allowing, we can now shadow our master unseen at all times, ready to jump out in a moment's notice when summoned. At 14th level, we gain another ability score improvement. We will increase our dexterity to 20 with this, capping it off. At 15th level, we gain Tongue of Sun and Moon, allowing us to understand all spoken languages and be understood by all who speak a language. If we couldn't be the perfect translator for our master, then what kind of butler would we be? 16th level grants us Diamond Soul, giving us proficiency in all saves. In addition, we can spend a key point when we fail a saving throw to re-roll it and take the second result. 17th level sees us gaining Timeless Body. We can no longer be aged magically and do not suffer the effects of frailty from old age. However, we can still die of old age. In addition, we no longer need food or water. Still need to sleep though. Too bad. 18th level sees us gaining our final ability score improvement. We shall put it into our Wisdom, increasing it to a 16. At 19th level, we gain Opportunist. Now whenever a creature within 5 feet of us is hit by an attack made by a creature other than us, we can use our reaction to make a melee attack against that creature. Perfect opportunity for a stunning strike in my opinion. Finally, at 20th level, we gain Empty Body. We can now spend 4 key points to become invisible for 1 minute. During this time, we also have resistance to all damage but force damage. Additionally, we can spend 8 key points to cast the Astral Projection spell without needing material components. But we can't take any other creatures with us. Not really a very Sebastian-like ability, but hey, if we couldn't project ourselves into the ethereal, what kind of butler would we be? It's important to note that when building a character like this, my first concern is getting the build to reflect that character as soon as possible. Not every campaign is going to reach 10th level, let alone 20th. So the bard levels are taken immediately at 2nd level to fill out our skills as a butler. But in reality, you could push them back a bit and fill out a bit of your combat abilities first if necessary. What's important is fitting the build to your campaign. In result, we have an AC of 18, not too bad, but pick up some magic AC boosting items if you can, it never hurts. 
A martial arts die is a d10, meaning on average we deal 10 damage a hit with up to 4 hits a round, 5 with opportunist. We can deal 40 to 50 points max each round. Because of jack of all trades, we are decently skilled in any skill we want to try. We also have proficiency in all saves. Not too far-fetched to say there's nothing we can't do, just like the demon butler of Phantom Hive should be. When trying to move stealthily, we have a plus 17 with the ability to become invisible under the right conditions. We make an excellent scout for our master, and pretty much an excellent anything. I think the build's main strength comes from our well-roundedness and versatility, not necessarily from any specialties. Plus, the roleplay opportunities with this character and the retainers are endless and quite fun. Thanks for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and in the comments, let me know just what kind of butler you would be.